have you been to the groomers and now you look really funny and your ears won't stay down? And Margo? I'm hiding because I look silly. Margo, please tell me, where is my other slipper? Where have you taken it? Where's my other slipper? I've hidden it. Now you're going to have to hop. <laughs> oh, I'm at a bit of a funny angle. I'm on my way to Marlborough today to see my friend Amy. She's having a baby and she's borrowing my Moses basket, which I love. I love that she's borrowing my Moses basket. It makes me really happy. Just in Ogborn St Andrew, what a fun name. <laughs> so I'm not far, I think I'm only about five, five minutes away from Marlborough. So when I get there, I need to just find somewhere to park. I'm sharing my location with Amy, so I should arrive there just before her. So I shall park up and let her know that I've arrived and then she can just hit directions on the Find My iPhone app and she can come and find me. Hopefully I'll be able to pay for my parking with my telephone, online payment, because I have literally got no cash. I don't even have one pence. I've only ever driven through Marlborough before, but I like it. Look, it's nice. Look, it's all old. Come with me. I'm trying to find a nice coffee place, preferably with a sunny seating area outside because it is a bit nippy. Oh, I hope it's not too windy. I saw one down here as well. That might work. Well, there's a Costa coffee. I'd rather have an independent. Not that I'm a coffee snob. Well, I am actually. But uh, I just like independence. Coffee lab. It's got a picture of a dog on there. Looks all right, doesn't it? Have a look in here. Shove my mask on. Hold on. Oh, I've dropped my mask. Oh, it's nice. I always thought Marlborough was really, really posh, but. And it looks posh, it's lots of lovely shops and well healed people, but I've seen two blokes who look like they've been up all night and had a fight. Ooh, nice. Country clothes. Oh, look at this. Hello. I'm just filming your jumper because I think my friends will like it. <laughs> this looks like it might work. Oh, look, old fashioned sweetie shop. Look how pretty this is. Ooh, it looks like they've got some nice things in here. Ooh. This countryside it's so different to where I live and over there I think they they are the Avebury standing stones
over there. Six miles. I don't know for sure, but I think they are the Avebury Standing Stone. So I'm going to Google, oh, Winterbourne Monkton. That's the village I'm about to drive through. It's a fun name as well. I'm going to Google all about what they are. The whole village seems to be set in amongst masses and masses of these standing stones. So there's a great big long strip of them. And then there's... A little village and that's nestled in amongst even more huge huge stones really interesting and the funny thing about driving through there just then was not only um, the feeling of wow what is this and oh I like those but a sense of um this sounds stupid because I haven't sat with these thoughts for long enough but um, not just history but a sense of something uh, moving in my spirit <laughs> that so silly I know what I mean though my mum has this funny thing whenever we pass um, Stonehenge she gets goosebumps even if she's having a snooze she just gets these goosebumps she thinks it's because of the the ley lines so um i wonder if it's something to do with that it's, it must be something ancient burial ley liney we're not that far from stonehenge here really um as bird flies um it's really lovely the countryside around here it's much different it's got a different feel. The skies are bigger than where we are. It's flatter. It's undulating, but it's flatter than where I live. It's beautiful, and it's more arable cropping. It's more arable than dairy. We've got a lot of dairy around our way. What is that noise? It's very windy. Roads. Can't show you though because of the way my camera is. And I can only stop and start recording when I'm stationary. It's illegal to do it otherwise. It's Pete! <laughs> you can't see but there's a massive tractor behind me. That was Pete. Pete, the other day, he um, he saw me going down the lane with my basket. I was on my way to Sue's house to pick her elderberries to make elderberry syrup. I've made her the jam from her raspberries. Did I tell you she can't eat her raspberries at the moment? They're not on the diet list because she is having cancer treatment. So I picked them all, she's not well enough to pick them all, and um, turned them into jam so that she can eat them when she's better. Um, and I said, oh, I've got some nice elderberries here, Sue. Do you, have you ever done anything with them? And she said, oh, I used to make elderberry syrup. I said, oh, I'll make some, never done that before first time for everything so um, I was toddling down the lane with my basket to get these um, elderberries I hope this isn't too wobbly and uh, I saw Pete and he said what are you doing with that Gainer I said I'm going to pick elderberries he said I've got elder trees in my garden I've got berries do you want them I said oh yeah all right then you know where we got into the garden He's got a really big garden, it's only him, so quite a bit of it is crazy. And uh, <laughs> we couldn't reach most of them. He said, hang on a minute, and off he went. Next minute, he's cut his tree down <laughs> so that I can get to the berries. I said, well, Pete, that's all well and good for this year, but how are we gonna have any next year? And he said, oh, it'll grow back. It'll grow back from the stump, it'll grow back like a weed. So we're good for berries next year as well. So funny though. And then he said, um, do you like flowers? I said, I do. 
he said, I'll pick you some. So he took me into the garden part where he grows flowers and he picked me a load of sweet peas and a load of sunflowers. And then he said, do you like courgettes or marrows? And I said, I do. So he went and picked me his massive courgette marrow. <laughs> We're still eating it now. Brilliant it is. Then, um, he said beetroot. I've got loads of beetroot. He just gave me the beetroot. Um, I don't like beetroot, but I didn't have the heart to tell him, bless him. Such a nice man. I'm picking up Wilf now. Water polo. He's been to water polo. Um, so I'm off to do that. And then when I get back, I'm cooking spaghetti bolognese. Hopefully no one will moan about it because everybody loves it and then I need to catch up with all the things I didn't do today housework wise um, and get ahead for tomorrow morning do the pack lunches I've had such a nice day though it's been absolutely lovely my journey to Marlborough to meet Amy you'll have seen by now Taylor S Studio um, was not the most picturesque but I had a lovely time I was rocking out to all my favourites from Red Hot Chili Peppers no, now they've got a big body of work and I don't like a lot of their songs but there's about five that I really love and I just played them over and over again sang my head off made up my own words and then on the way back I saw those Avery Stones I've had a quick read and it is, I think it is the world's largest ceremonial henge. It's like, a, not Stonehenge, but I think they called it a henge. Anyway, st st stone circles. It's, um, I think they said it was Neolithic. I'm gonna stop now and look it up properly. I'm here now in the car park ready to go in and collect Wilf. I've got about five minutes before I need to go and stand outside. So I'm reading the National Trust website for Avebury. If I remember I'll link it below but if you want if I forget just google National Trust Avebury A-V-E-B-U-R-Y and it says that Avebury stones are the largest stone circles in the world. Avebury, the village, pretty village nestled within the Avebury stones, is part of the World Heritage Site of Avebury and Stonehenge um, because of its outstanding Bronze Age and Neolithic history. Unlike Stonehenge, you can actually wander around and touch all of these stones and you can, that it opens from dusk till dawn. So you can just go and hang out there as much as you like. And from what I understand, there's a ditch and a bank. And this was all done, all of these monuments were done during the Neolithic and Bronze Age with the most primitive of tools. So how these people managed to all come together and when you think of how small the population would have been back then and spread out they all came together to create this that just blows my mind how long it must have taken and the fact that people didn't live that long back then either blows my tiny mind I was going to become a National Trust member because I we've got a National Trust property not too far from us and I really want to go back to Stourhead. I used to hang out there all the time when I was younger. And I, we're not far from Bowwood House either. I'd like to go there. And now that I've read up about Avebury Stones and Avebury Manor and the National Trust's work there, I, I'm sold. I'm going to put it on my Christmas list.